<clears throat> Hi, folks. This is Dr. Kat Schreier uh, with Water Citizen Media Foundation and your host for The Water Show. And here we're having another fabulous one on one uh, interview with another thought leader in water. And this is actually someone who is relatively new in, in water years uh, to the water industry, author Seth Siegel, who has written a book that's really changing the way people are thinking and talking about water in a very exciting way. Thanks, thanks for, for talking with us. Thank you. Glad to be here. And I, I never knew before today that cats and water go together, but I guess uh, Oh yeah, cat, you uh, you do water work very well. Thank you. We, you know, used to be called Water Cat Consulting uh, back in the day. Yeah, so the the, the the change, the reason why I think people have sparked to the book is because it's optimistic message, mm -hmm. and that most environmental books, most population books, most water books have kind of a commonality about them. Which you finish them and you just depressed and you think the world is coming to an end. You read my book and you understand that there are really practical, achievable solutions to virtually every one of our water problems. You just have to want it and want to start doing it and do it. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, I, I think that's something we have in common is we, the way we do water stories and water system news and the water show is really, you know, not shying away from, it's not, not about greenwashing or blue washing or whatever. It's, um, but, you know, talking about not just the, the problems, but also the solutions that are out there. Right. So, and, and the innovations and just, just the, the passion and the excitement that people have. I mean, it's not about the water. It's about the citizens, it's about people and their passion for water and for doing something about water. Now you talked about um, in looking for new models to, to, to kind of explain to the folks out there if they haven't read the book, not that anyone has it, of course, everyone's read it, yeah. but in case they have it. So what was the name of this thing again? The book or yeah, the book. The book's called Let There Be Water. Israel's solution for a water starved world. Thank you for that, allowing me that shameless plug. Good. Uh, it's from St. Martin's Press. It came out in fall of last year, 2015. And all the, all the proceeds go to charity. All the royalty profits go to charity, yeah. every penny of it. If before you knew how many we're going to sell. You know, I think I'm, you know, I tell you something, as, a, as kind of a do gooder personality, I like the idea that the more I can give away, the actually the happier I am, you know. I, I've been blessed, uh, very blessed to have had a successful business career. So, so this allows me to do put my time into doing good and yeah. and applying some resources too. But anyway, but, but, wait, where, where, where the, is the, where are the, um, the books, oh, yeah, the, the charity? Uh, proceeds. It's going. water related stuff primarily. Okay. Yeah. Right. Let me, let me uh, say that the, 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 how the book came about was about five years ago, I read a just declassified US government report that said from the National Intelligence Council, it said that we're going to be going into a period of growing water scarcity and that by the year 2025, about 60% of the world's land mass and billions and billions of people will be suffering from water scarcity. And when I heard that as a concerned citizen, I said to myself, I really want to engage on this issue and figure out what are some of the ways we can solve this problem. And I looked around the world for models. And to my utter surprise, I found that Israel was a model. And the reason why I was so surprised is that Israel is in the center of the driest region in the world. And if they were able, despite their fast growing population, their fast growing economy, and they're, them being a severe victim of climate change, if they were able to be so water abundant, I wanted to know what they did so that we in America and people all over the world could do. And, and I went out to learn learn what they did. And when I, once I learned it, I realized it was a story that might, that might interest people. I, I got lucky in it, and it was. You know, it, it's kind of funny, and, and, and you talked about, you know, looking at other countries, Australia and other places Singapore, that, that were not, yep. not the best model. Um, and, and just that experience of the awareness Level. I mean, I think for me, it was similar when I went from being out east to Colorado State, and suddenly, you know, the taxi drivers were explaining to me how the Denver aquifers worked, and, and you know, that there are certain pockets around the country. Yeah. You know, we looked at New Orleans, high level of water awareness in small regions where there <laughs> there is both a media activity and covering water stories better, yeah. and just that in your face stuff going on hurt but you know floods, but you know I, I would think in a hierarchy so that mm -hmm. surely awareness is important mm -hmm. but i would also say that even in places where there's awareness there isn't always action 
Right. And there isn't always even forward-looking action so that, you know, Southern California clearly is aware now. Everyone right. there is aware. Right, right. And they've taken some action, but have they taken all the actions that they might take that integrate technology, that asks citizens to rethink their water profile, that asks agriculture to come up with new means of irrigation? And the answer is, truthfully, not as much as that could be done. And, and if you had a system that was as focused on water smarts as we are in saying on profitability smarts, mm -hmm. we would have a much better water profile. We still are largely victim of a mindset that water is an almost inexhaustible resource and that there's always going to be more of it out there. That's the, that's the problem that we face in my view, which is before we get to the technologies or before we get to the legislation or the regulation, we need a change of mindset. And even if it's good that Southern California or, or Baton Rouge has figured it out, it is good. That's good. It's still something a further step needs to be taken. Yeah, you know, there, there's a phenomenon that I've noticed over the last several years in the water industry, which is people from outside water professions who are good storytellers and good researchers and whatnot um, who discover water. You know, they, yeah. they do a book on it, they do an article that turns yeah. into a book, or whatever. Like Charles Fishman. Charles Fishman, yourself, uh, Robert Glennon. Uh, well, Robert Glennon, the, uh, Robert is somebody I admire greatly. Yeah, Robert is a, is a professor. No, Robert Glennon is a professor. Right, right. Is a professor of of and one of the areas that he covers is water, uh, water uh, legislation and water policy. So it makes his two books on water, which are both at least two that I've read. I mean, there might be more that are just fabulous. Yes, yeah. You know, I, I admire him and his books enormously. And you know, a lot of these books become bestsellers, and the next thing you know, these water professional conferences will bring in these authors who've yeah. written books and look to them for guidance on how to do water, I, what I what I would love to do is help water professionals become better communicators themselves. I'm with, I'm, I'm with, I'm with you, by the way. You know, yeah. I, I, I frequently will start speaking for big conferences and say, I got news for everyone here. There's one person in this room who clearly knows less about water than anybody else, and that's me. And I'm the guy on stage with the spotlight on me, and there's something sort of counterintuitive about that. But I think what happens is we, we give honor in society to people who put ideas out in a new way. And I think that with my book, I'm putting out an idea in a new way, which is that we need to reform our agriculture here, that we need to start thinking about wastewater reuse, that we need to start thinking about desalination in a different way. It doesn't mean that I understand how any of these three or other technologies work. It doesn't mean that. Certainly people at this conference that we're at know it better than I do. But what's different between me and with Charles Fishman and others is the idea that we're thinking about it maybe because we're outsiders, we're able to think about it in a slightly different way. And I think that that's actually helpful to everybody. I don't pretend to be a water expert and I would, you know, I've been offered opportunities to teach college courses and I always say, forget it. I, I, yeah. don't, I don't know that stuff. Well, they, you know, I think there's a lot within the industry that kind of holds people back from, you know, but I, but I, but I wish, but I, I wish there were twenty. I, I wish there were twenty water books a year that that were of note, and I would I would agree with you. I wish that water professionals started writing these books. Yeah, I, I want to see more water celebrities who are able to speak on camera. You know, we do coaching for that sort of thing for people who want to be spokespersons because you know we talk about the pipes being buried no longer, where our professionals yeah. also need to be buried no longer. Get out, be speakers, be authors, yep. have your own water show. But I think, but I think, an all of the above also works. In other yes. words. I, I, I would not have written my book had this book been written. Yes. Uh, when I came up with this insight that Israel was a great model for the world and how to manage our water, I didn't think I'm writing a book about it. I thought I'm going to go to the bookstore and find a book about that subject matter. And I wanted to buy a bunch of them and give them out to friends of mine and people who are policymakers and say, look at this. Not just, hey, Israel, look at this model. I mean, yeah, right, Israel right. happened to be the model. Yeah, yeah. And, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm looking around and there's no book. And I figured, oh, there must be a book in Hebrew like that. So maybe what I'll do is I'll pay somebody to translate it. You know, it costs a couple of thousand bucks to get a book translated. But, you know, I'll, I'll get somebody to translate it and I'll sort of give out a photocopied version of the translation out to you know, 50 policymakers who I admire. <laughs> There's not even a book in Hebrew. So Amazing I said, Jesus, there's a book that needs to be written. Yeah. Well, there, there are many great stories in water. There are many great books to be written. Really appreciate your writing this book. It is certainly shaking and, and, things and up. And St. Martin's Press has signed the, sent me a contract for another water book. So Yes, wait, so, tell us about your next book. Well, it's going to be more focused New on plug. water policy. No, I said, <laughs> 
I can't believe me, I got so many hours at the keyboard between now and then that uh, it, 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 there's plenty of time to, to think about how to plug it. Yeah. Right, right now. Maybe uh, we won't right book now, you for the for the uh, uh, conference yeah. this fall. Maybe, yeah, maybe in 2018, 2019. 2018, 20. So mark that in your calendars yeah, if you're no planning doubt. the next water card. No so what what is this one? It's going to be more water, water policy. It's going to be more a this book that I wrote first. Uh, Let there be water is more descriptive of what Israel did. Right. I want the next book to be more prescriptive. I want to take the learnings I've gotten from traveling around. Uh, since the book has come out, speaking to water professionals, I want to synthesize their thoughts on what are the best ways we're going to fix our water future here in America. Uh, so the first one was to give a model, and the second one is just to identify what are the problems and how we can fix it. Well, and, and you know, it's, it's very much a water planner perspective, which is where I came from, and as well as Jim Tebow, the filmmaker. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know Jim very well. He yeah, and, I spoke, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I spoke yesterday morning. Perfect, perfect, because I don't know if you knew that we were going to talk, because no. I'm moving out to L.A. in part because he and I are going to work together on the oh. next Running Dry um, well, Water and Food Security. Well, t t tell him that you and I have become friends. Well, absolutely, absolutely. See, Jim, uh, he's watching, I'm sure yeah, he's I'm watching. Sure. Hey, Jim, how I are do. you? Okay, so, maybe Jim's the only one watching this. Anyway, no, no, plenty of people who are watching I that. I hate to do this, but I if know. I miss my flight, I'm going to have Don't bigger problems. Flight. Okay, darling, okay. Well, thank you so much for being pleasure. here. Yeah, thank well, you. Well, this, thank is, you this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. I love it. All okay. right. And thank you if you're watching this anywhere other than thewatershow.org. Come on over there. That's where the discussion is. That's where all the downloads and the extra videos are. And uh, look forward to seeing you there. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Kat.